Okay, so I'm making a video and what I'm going to do here is stand up in this video. Maybe if I stand back. I took a video of my body with my camera, but it's not good. So I'm showing you my weight loss. I look at look like my grandmother when I look at this. I remember the way her body looked. And let's see. I'm just going to take this. I don't know if there's any way of backing up. Let me see. kind of see. That's why I took a video. Anyway, I can't seem to get the video up, but I'm not perfect and I'm not a tech expert and I don't like tech. I think it's a waste of time, and, but I wish I could be a little bit more helpful. But you're going to have to believe me on some level that I lost a lot of weight. So I'm going to share my measurements and my dates here. So, okay, my last, the end of round one, which was May 26, 2016, my uh, my waist was 31, my hips were 43, my upper arm was 12, my right thigh was 25, my left thigh was 24, my belly was 39, my bust was 37, and okay, so this is just a brief from round one, and that is. Oh, wait a second, wait a second. I'm sorry, never mind. Okay, so round two. This is just round two. Forget about what I just said. Okay, on round two is April 29th, 2016. Oh, wait a second. April 3rd. Okay, finally. Okay, April 3rd, 2016. My second round at the beginning. I think it was the second day. Neck 14. Bust 39. Waist 33. Hips 46. Upper arm 13. Right thigh 28. Left thigh 26 belly 43. So, and I want to share the measurements from the last round. So from round one in September of 2015, September 11th actually, my neck was 14, so that's no difference. My bust, I gained one inch, it was 38. My waist, I gained one inch, it was 32. My hips, I gained three inches, went from 43 to 46. My upper arm was 12, so I had gained one inch on my upper arm. My right thigh was 28. No, my right thigh was 25, so I actually gained three inches on my right thigh after round one and before round two. And then my left thigh, I had gained two inches. It went from 24 to 26. And my belly was 40 to 43. So I gained three inches on my belly. So, and I had started my from the beginning of starting HCG, my belly was 45. So I, and then my left thigh was 31. So essentially I 
gained I lost five on my belly and I gained three back and I had two inches to go to be where I was from the beginning, which, you know, it's a process. And then the thighs, they started absolute beginning, the first round of HCG at 31 inches and I went down to 25 inches and then I really... Then I just went two inches up on each one. So I was at 26 and 27 when I started, or 28 and 26 when I started. So yeah, um, so it was about four inches that I never gained back. My thighs are actually the thing that I lose first on. I see that now. I lost several inches in the first round. I lost 10 in 10 days. I lost three inches off my right thigh and four inches off my left thigh just in the first 10 days of HCG. So that's really And then I never really gained it back. I didn't go, yeah. I never really went back to the original. I always stayed, so there was about three, three or four inches, three and four inches that I never gave back on my thighs. Um, the upper arms, I went down one inch and I never went back to 14 inches. I went up to 13. So the last number was 12 and then I went up to 13. Um, but I never went back to 14. The hips, I went back to only one inch less than what I had originally started at. So when I started round two, I was at 46 and my absolute first measurement from round one was 47. So I did gain back in my hips. You know, I lost an inch that I never gained back. But now the waist, I 36, 33, 33. Yeah, I gained three pounds. I mean, I I never went back to 36, which was my original. I was at 33, so I was three inches less on my waist than before, than ever before, than my first measurement. So that's, my bus went down three inches a lot. So, and my neck went to four, 15 to 14, and it's pretty much stayed at 14. So the, this is complicated way of saying, you know, really assessing, did I gain all the way back? No. Um, and we're thinking about it in terms of, so we're talking about from September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, June, March, wait, eight months, seven months. So I d ate what I ate for seven months after the first round and I gained some weight back. And I think this is a very important video to make because of that, because I know some people do HCG and then they get, det I know I almost didn't admit to anybody that I had gained some of the weight back. And so it's really important to understand that uh, HCG is a tool, but 
I really believe that the eating patterns and identifying the effects different food have on me is super important. I mean, it is the critical factor to be able to know what I, how I react. And I did really good at the beginning in the summer um, with the elimination diet. But then when I got back into grains and sugar and um, dairy and nuts, I... I really wasn't able to be as careful to know what the effects those foods were had on me. So now I feel like I'm ready to do that. So there's some kind of like the dangerous foods, like the ones that they say, oh, leave it till the end, dairy, nuts, the grains. So I'm a little bit nervous, but I am going to be doing that. I have identified that I have a, a digestive sensitivity to pistachios, cashews, and um, corn. Corn. Not all corn. I, that's another thing is I don't quite know what with corn. Um, and then there's this major sh mental shift that I've discovered where I can eat. The last two days I've eaten like a cup of coconut oil, including a half a cup of peanut butter. I mean, I'm just astonished at the amount of fat I'm eating and I'm not gaining at all. And you've heard people talk about that with HCG and I just, it's hard to find a theoretical structure to hold that in because it's been such dr so drilled into my head that when I eat fat I'm going to get fat. So it's it's this mental it's mental um shift process. But it's worth it. I'm worth it. I'm worth making mistakes and fixing what I need to fix and discovering new things about my body. So the weight loss, actual weights are, so my first round, I was July 10th, 2015, and I was 211.5. And then August 23rd, 2015, I dropped to 182.8. And April 11th, 2016, which is the beginning of round two, I was up 13 pounds to 195.8. And um, I steadily dropped to where it is now the last injection weight was 169.2 however it's the end of my stabilization period and i am 194 i mean 164 today and i've been down at 163 for the last couple days and so i've been sort of bouncing around down there, but I'm like well below my last injection weight. And one of those, you know, I have had a rocky stabilization in that I just really couldn't get the portions right. I just didn't want to eat small portions. So I kind of had to suffer and make myself sick so many times that I finally said, okay, I'm not eating large portion sizes. I could have sworn that on round two, I mean, round one, I was able to at least eat steak after a week. Um, I was also taking bio supplements and it seemed to work within 20 minutes. I wouldn't have stomach pain, but this time around that didn't happen. So I still can't eat beef without having a stomach ache. It's been three weeks since the end of round two. So it's different, but 
the same things are holding true that I can have all this peanut butter, all this coconut oil, um, nuts. Of course, peanuts are like supposedly the worst, but of course I can have almonds. I'm having uh, coconut cream, um, coconut milk. I'm not drinking cups of coconut milk, but I don't think my calories are super high because I have stopped eating so much. However, this I'm craving salts and fats. Um, so I just think it's important to say that this is not easy, like an easy, super clear process that I'm now committed to the belief that I need to find out for me on an individual basis what's, what works for me with food. That I can't read a book or talk to a dietitian or talk to a nutritionist or anything to know what is going to work for me. So I need to focus, I need to simplify, you know, my diet and, and do an elimination diet. I really have gotten a lot from an elimination diet, but the complicating factor is because when I was in maintenance, I mean, when I was in stabilization, when I was in phase three, um, when I was in phase three, I couldn't eat quantities um, and some things had fat in them like the meat and the dairy had has fat and the nuts and so I wondered if I was having problems with them because of the fat in them so I felt like I needed to get my ability to digest fat up and running because that needed to slowly happen and so, but, you know, I was surprised that I could eat peanut butter and have no problem, but then I would eat steak and I'd have a problem. So I'm not quite sure, but at this point, I'm pretty confident I can eat fat. Um, so if I have problems with something, it's not the fat in it. it it's the thing. So I tried goat milk because my, okay, so... I'm going to make another video.